Good afternoon, Commissioners. 41, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, before we get started with the presentation, I want to talk a little bit about, we are going to talk about history, but I want to talk a little further about um, how we're here today. As you know, many of you recently were able to participate in the Visions Tour that we held in the 41 corridor. This project in this corridor has been studied extensively over the last decade, decade and a half. And prior to uh, moving forward, I guess, with a, a more uh, extensive public outreach effort, we had engaged that opportunity of that light rail corridor study with community leaders to determine that there indeed was interest and support for re-engaging this effort um, more broadly in the community. So what we wanted to do was kind of go through and talk uh, through uh, why we were considering uh, this kind of a, of a project and an investment in this corridor and a lot about the history of it because there's quite an extensive history. The Northwest Atlanta Corridor, 41 in particular, and the uh, 75 Corridor in the north um, have been areas that have experienced traffic congestion as an ongoing problem for some time. And many solutions have been explored over several decades. And high capacity transit is one of those that's been favorably considered. One uh, metric that we would point out is that as a part of the uh, Cobb County's own transportation plan, there was a scientifically valid public opinion survey that was performed. And that public opinion survey demonstrated that there was uh, over 60% support from citizens in Cobb County for a rail investment. The Northwest Corridor US-41 and I-75 studies date back to 1994. Uh, a variety of different public involvement activities have been held over that period of time, extensive public involvement. Multiple solutions have been identified and evaluated, and light rail is one of those that has been proposed as a viable option. I um, want to take just a minute to talk about the differences between commuter and light rail because we've heard comments from the public on both. Um, the commuter rail service typically you know, operates between a city center and outer suburbs or towns, carries a larger number of commuters on a daily basis, and often shares tracks, uh, technology, and a legal framework with mainline railway. It can be diesel or electric. Um, it can be powered by third rail or overhead. Light rail tends to be somewhat lower capacity and lower speed than heavy rail, um, but also is able to more adaptable to grades and more adaptable uh, to tighter radii and some of the kinds of conditions, particularly that we find in the Cumberland area and in the town center areas of this, this particular corridor. The Prior studies, and as we said, that are extensive that have been done are listed up here. The first group have been performed by Cobb County and, and or their partners. Uh, the second category by ARC and the Transit Planning Board, um, now called um, RTC, GDOT, and then Greta or CERTA. There are three in particular um, that I would call your attention to here that are important for your consideration um, in whether to um, move forward with, with further activity in this quarter. Under the first uh, category, can we go back? I'm sorry. Under the first category, the 2008 Cobb CTP. In the second category, the 2008 Concept 3. And Concept 3 is the plan for regional transit. Um, and then um, also the 2006 2030 RTP, which is the region's transportation plan. Uh, all of those documents all carry um, some element of this project in them, and in order for the project to be considered and move forward for any other kind of uh, funding, federal, state, and that sort of thing, it has to be included in all of those, and is. So those three are of particular importance. Another thing that's important to note is Cobb County's population and employment has been steadily uh, growing over the years. Even when you can see, even in the economic uh, downturn that we are experiencing um, for the last few years, even between 2000 and 2009, we're still holding our own in the employment base and our population has continued to grow. And growth in the corridor and transit ridership um, has increased. This represents uh, the US 41 I-75, the orange bar, represents both express bus ridership in the I-75 corridor as well as the Route 10 ridership um, in the US 41 corridor. Um, and then system-wide, what we're seeing in terms of a growth 
of transit ridership. The proposed Northwest Corridor light rail project is focused along the US 41 Cobb Parkway from the Cumberland area to the town center area. Um, anchors those two very vibrant community improvement districts, but also includes a lot of community assets that you all know well about in between. Um, in terms, we have Kennesaw State, we have Southern Poly, we have Dobbins, um, and a number of other assets in that corridor that are key to connect. And particularly on the, uh, the Cumberland end and on the Town Center end, we have two uh, regional um, shopping area destinations, as well as on the Cumberland end, Cumberland end having the Galleria as an event location and the Performing Arts Center. Connectivity to regional systems in downtown Atlanta and perimeter in Gwinnett are going to be extremely important. Uh, light rail is, while there's always got to be a first part of it that really gets the system going, a first piece that advances. Um, every city that has advanced light rail, with the exception of Buffalo, New York, has built, after they've built one, they've built two and three and four. Um, but the, so the connectivity to a regional system is going to be critically important. And I know that that's a conversation that you all are aware of that's occurring in the region now. And we would want to have that kind of connectivity to the activity centers in the downtown, to the perimeter area, and into Gwinnett. The trunk line length is approximately 14 miles. And under this conceptual study, and I want to emphasize that the work that's been done to date and even the work that was presented on the bus tour is very conceptual. The cost estimates are, and the actual location and whether the, the tracks are elevated or at grade, those are things that are going to have to be really refined. We don't have all the answers for that right now because we're going to have to have further engineering study to really detail those things. <coughs> So we would anticipate that the tracks could be elevated and or at grade, so some of both. The maintenance facilities, which are critically important, would be located in the Canton Road connector area. And then there would be two circulators on each end within the Cumberland and Town Center activity centers. The Cumberland one at this point, as, we've, as the concept has shown, would be about 14.1 miles. And the Town Center and KSU would be about 12.4 miles. On the Cumberland end, uh, just preliminary, we were envisioning that that could possibly still be a fixed guideway connection to the uh, light rail on the main line. And the town center in the KSU in, in particular, would likely be a rubber tired connection to allow for the kind of flexibility that you need, particularly on the KSU campus, to be able to um, reach all of the, the, um, the ridership. Again, the proposed station locations are the, these are the same ones that were included in the information that was presented in the bus tour. These proposed station locations, I want to underscore them being proposed. Um, these could be more or fewer, uh, depending on how our engineering study, if, we, if you choose to move forward with that, depending on how an engineering study would further detail those out. Again, this just shows the approximate length of the trunk line, the circulators, and the total number of stations that could be anticipated and the kind of projected ridership um, that we could attain. This is a, a very um, healthy, very comparable ridership to other uh, very successful light rail systems. One of the things that you heard us talk about and heard us say when we were on the um, bus tour, um, those who participated in it, was that the real key is not the capital cost. If you can determine how you're going to operate and maintain the system, that's, that's the part that goes on forever and that you really need to um, be able to define because once you can define that, you can, you can secure the capital funding to build it. Um, we have estimated the annual operating cost. I know that looks like quite a range. Again, this is dependent on how many stations we end up having, um, how much, how the length of the circulators and other kinds of, of design considerations that would be forthcoming through additional study. The potential funding sources, um, we are actually at a time that's really quite unique in the history of all the look-sees that have been done of this corridor and this project. Um, there are both federal sources that are, have not always been available in the past. There are some federal sources 
um, that are like the JARC funding that could be their small funding sources, but ongoing funding sources through Federal Transit Administration. CMAC, as you know, is limited to three years for operating, but is a sort of a startup, if you will. So there's a, a number of different federal funding sources in addition to some of the, the really uh, different things through stimulus and that kind of thing that are, could be available as federal. There's fair revenue, and our current system has about a 20 seven percent I think it is fair box recovery rate um, on our bus system so fair revenue is an additional funding source um, towards the light rail and then a variety of potential other sources um, the participation of the two CIDs that anchor this quarter parking fees the cities and counties participation um, and others there's also um, the regional transportation um, SPLOS that was recently passed by the legislature um, that potentially could be a funding source um, on the capital side for transit um, as well. A proposed schedule and moving forward and this is again a, a, a pretty ambitious schedule but it is one that has been attained by at least one of the most successful current light rail investments the uh, uh, Phoenix system got the single largest earmark um, for their program that, that FTA had ever awarded and they delivered on approximately the same kind of schedule that we are we are defining up here so what we are proposing is that later in the year we would continue it says complete but we would really it's really an ongoing process uh, continue early coordination with the state local and federal agencies uh, begin to refine the project description and really begin to detail out that funding that's so important and initiate the alternatives analysis and EIS and we think that that could be done as a joint document rather than separate documents um, by uh, next year and what the the other thing that that we know that's important is um, if the County Commission determines that this is an investment in a, a project that they'd like to uh, determine more about the next piece of this would be um, to engage that set of community uh, very very broad range of, of community outreach activities in the fall that we had talked about on the bus tour with stakeholder interviews community charrettes um, speaking to groups really reaching out in the community to find out what would people really like to see in this corridor what are their concerns about light rail um, and what are their concerns about transit and bring that back to help really shape a project that is both truly unique to Cock County and truly supported by the community. So August of 2012, we would really begin to develop the joint AAEIS and determining our funding for construction operations and maintenance. Um, and by November of 2013, complete that determination of project funding and the associated implementation steps and potentially move forward with a a design build contract and a select contractor. We'll still be working with the FTA process of new starts. Um, even if I, I know that there has been, we've had some questions from citizens after the light rail tour about whether or not this project could be built, um, if the, just the construction of it could be done in some manner that didn't involve, for example, federal participation. But the reason we really want to follow the federal process is in order to preserve our eligibility for any kind of federal aid, be it for operating or whatever, moving forward. So we would never want to, um, I, I don't think, short shortchange that process. Why, why do we want to consider uh, light rail in the corridor? It provides an alternative to automobile travel, has a positive impact on the region's air quality, reducing congestion and automobile emissions along those primary corridors and in those areas that we've talked about. And in particular, in the parts of the corridor that are already poised for um, potential redevelopment activity with the redevelopment overlay districts that Cobb County and I think the city of Smyrna also has, um, city of Marietta, and we talked about that on the bus tour as well, allow the land to be developed and redeveloped in accordance with smart growth principles. Um, that result in a positive impact on land use and result in economic development opportunity um, for the county. One of the things, um, the, the 20 mile long uh, rail investment in Phoenix um, yielded, a, a, their total um, investment in that 20 miles was $1.4 billion and they saw about a $7.4 billion return in terms of development, economic development, redevelopment activity in that quarter. 
One of the other things that we're going to be doing is looking at, at other success stories and other light rail systems to review. And we want to look at the broadest range of those from those that are very mature, um, like the ones in New Jersey. Uh, we've got Newark listed up here. The Camden line is also um, a, a, has a very unique um, situation in that it's one of the few that has been given a, a, a certification by FRA to be able to operate um, in the same on well, the same track as, as a freight rail. Um, but most are not um, allowed to do that. Then Charlotte, North Carolina, and I think we're all familiar with, with the Charlotte system. Minneapolis, St. Paul, Denver, Phoenix, Los Angeles. Some of these other ones, we can learn something from all of these. Um, I think from the more mature ones, we can learn about what it takes over the long haul in terms of operating and maintaining the system and what it took to really advance it and what lessons they've learned from some of the newer systems. Um, and newer investments, um, particularly like Phoenix. Phoenix bears a lot of resemblance to us, whereas, for example, in Newark, there's a lot more density of population and, frankly, density of just transit um, opportunity there, transit network. Um, Phoenix was very similar to us, and we've been working with the staff there to learn more about how they did what they did because their population densities are very similar to ours. They're, they're not, they don't have great densities of population like some of the uh, areas in the northwest part of the country. So we're going to talk about some of these selected examples. Phoenix uh, light rail construction began in 2004. Their line is 20 miles long with nine stations. Mentioned that they've seen $7.4 billion in public and private development within walking distance of the light rail transit. And they are at 35,000 daily riders. They exceeded their ridership projections uh, by about 30%. Charlotte, and this is just so you can kind of see some of the look of the vehicle types and the areas um, in which the light rail is running. This is a, uh, from Minneapolis, this is the Hiawatha line, and this shows how they looked at their development and redevelopment planning, which is really very critical to what kinds of things they wanted to see happen. That certainly doesn't uh, intend to suggest that those um, purple high rises and that kind of thing are what we want to have, but it's it just gives you an example of how they looked at how to create some of the kind of density around station locations and such that would enable that economic development activity. The land use uh, planning process during transit project development is extremely important. Um, coordination with community development and with the cities is going to be extremely important. And this is just a, a, a walk through. Typical project development process is six to 12 years. Um, we can do this in a, in a more, as some of our neighbors have shown us, we can do this in a more uh, expeditious way. Um, but that's typically the process to getting to FTA approval and entering into a full funding grant agreement that enables you to access New Starts funding. Some of the next steps that we've talked about are public engagement activities, which we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, commissioner town, using the commissioner town hall meeting structure that we already presently use to reach out to the communities, charrettes, speaking engagements. Um, again, going in to meet with um, the groups along the corridor and, and key stakeholder interviews. And then looking at the planning studies and requirements, the regional plan 2040 update is going on now. Um, this project is already in the current plan and, and we're working with our partners um, at the Atlanta Regional Commission and our neighbors in the surrounding counties. Um, looking at light rail as a system and looking at back to what we talked about earlier about connections to perimeter, connections to Gwinnett, connections to downtown, how we're all going to work together um, to advance that kind of a concept under uh, Regional Plan 2040. And then begin to initiate the studies, environmental studies, but the alternatives analysis DEIS that's needed in order for the project to be considered and qualify potentially for federal aid. proposed interim projects and activities. One of the other things that we discussed on the rail tour was to prepare the corridor for light rail. We do need to do some detailed corridor planning beyond the concept work that we have now. Um, we wanted to implement express bus service in this corridor with signal preemption. This shows you an example of a Q-jumper lane. Um, and we talked about that on the, on the tour as well. And continue our coordination with the regional partners and participation in that regional um, 2040 development process as well as with the regional transit group. And with that, we're open to your questions.
they, uh, how do the other systems fund their M and O, such as Phoenix or Denver or LA? There are some very, very small portions of uh, federal funds that's available. A lot of it is local funding, SPLOS, and those kinds of, of mechanisms that are used to operate it. Mm -hmm. Taxes from the redevelopment overlay districts that are committed back to the project. So it's, it's always a variety of funding sources. There's not sort of a one-stop shop. Okay. Which there shouldn't be because we know what's happening with the federal grants for the express bus routes. So. Um, yeah, I promised the chairman I wouldn't get too involved here. So, um, I think the important things to point out with this is that this has to be part of an overall system that works for the region. Um, we can't just be building a light rail system that goes from town center to Cumberland. Um, and so, I think it's really important that as we move forward, that we keep that part of the vision in mind. That we we have to kind of work. The idea is if if the system's going to work, somebody has to be able to go from Cobb County to the airport without having to drive almost as far to a station and then transfer you know, on MARTA or whatever system we have to get to the airport where it takes them longer. Um, and that kind of gets to the next point that there is a time advantage that in order for a transit system to work, it has to have a, a time advantage over the, the competition, which is the car. And, and I know you and I have talked about how with our continuing effort to widen roads, really what we're doing is we're just moving that acceptable commute time further and further out and then that spurs development and then we just get right back to the congestion that we see. Um, and we continue to try to advantage the, the time that someone spends in their car. And I think we have to move in the direction of advantaging the transit options versus the car. Because in order for the system to work, you know, the, the transit has to have a better uh, time advantage. Um, and I think on the successful systems, I would agree that the density, say, and you know, you and I have talked about the New Jersey system. The, yes, there's more density up there, but part of the other thing that I think is important in looking at it from more of a George perspective, because there's been a lot of discussion in some of those other studies you've talked about, rail lines out to Athens or rail lines up to Chattanooga or down to Macon and things like that, that system works because it does similar things. It not only concentrates on the, you know, the, the Newark area getting close to the city, but it does also connect the outlying cities. And I think some of the differences between Phoenix and Charlotte, Phoenix is not attempting to connect itself to any other systems or any other part of the state. It's really just providing a system for downtown Phoenix, as is Charlotte. And so I think that some of the advantages that can be gained by looking at, um, the other one we talked about was the T up in Boston. Another example, that's an example where the outlying suburb uh, trains come together on the, the metro lines and become the bigger trains and then connect to the heavy rail. And so it kind of brings it all together. There's a lot of advantage to looking into using the same tracks. I think the final thing is, too, um, you know, the board at a previous work session was briefed by uh, Beth Sessions from the city of Marietta about their attempts to redevelop the Franklin Road area as a tech corridor. And I think really that one of the things that needs to be looked at, besides the 14-mile trunk line coming down 41, there needs to be consideration of a spur or some addition to the system going down the Franklin Road corridor um, to help that would kind of go right along with what their plans are. Absolutely. So. I think in addition to that, um, Commissioner Rod, I would add, we've also <coughs> had inquiries um, since we've started this and since the light rail tour, and I believe Commissioner Gorham is aware of this as well from the city of Kennesaw, that they would like to see us look further. I, um, yeah, I was, I was going to mention, I know Representative uh, Ed Setzler had spoken to me about their interest, in, and I wanted to point out, you know, we talk about regional, but we look south all the time, and we need to look north. Absolutely. We need to look what's coming out of Paulding County on Cedar Crest and see how we might be able to work relieving some of that traffic that just pours down 41 and having them connect into this system. You know, I don't know what it would take, whether they would have park and ride la uh, lots in the Cedar Crest area and then come over to a station. But we also have to look up to Bartow and look at the, the possibility of Bartow, um, you know, plugging into this system in some manner. So for regional, we need to look north, also northwest, not just south. And, and I know that the city of Kennesaw and the city of Ackworth are looking at this as an opportunity for them also. So we, we need to keep that regional vision going. Absolutely. 
About, about 13 years ago, uh, some of us went on a trip to Vancouver and Portland. I believe the county manager was along, and I saw Mr. Croy back there. I believe he was. Here we are 13 years later, and this is the first time I believe we've had something that's, that's quite substantial and a well-thought-out plan, but it's got a long ways to go. Uh, it's, it's already been mentioned about the connectivity. I think as we get into talking to the public and getting their input on this, that's going to be something that will come up as far as connectivity to get to, as Bob said, downtown the airport and so forth. Uh, so we've got a lot of work to do. But uh, it's, it's rather exciting to see the, a plan really starting to come together. And I think part of that connectivity will be addressed uh, possibly in the, the initiative that will be brought forward with the uh, T-SPOST in, uh, in 2012. Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.